Today we're making malasadas, which are fried pieces of dough, kind of like a donut. Now, they're beloved all around the world, especially in Portuguese settled communities, including those in Hawaii. Now, that's where we took our inspiration. And here to show us more about malasadas is Christy. Bridget, malasadas are not just donuts without a hole. Right. These have a distinctive texture. They're kind of crispy on the mm. outside. They're soft and chewy on the inside. And they have a slightly eggy flavor that's just fantastic. Mm. So they may have originated in Portugal, but you can find them all over the United States. Right. And we're going to make them today. Yeah, I love that in Hawaii, Fat Tuesday, the Tuesday before Lent, is sometimes referred to as malasada day. What a day to look forward to. So we want to make sure that we're doing these right. We want to make sure we get that correct, slightly chewy texture. Mm. And so we're going to start with bread flour. Okay. You know, bread flour has a higher amount of protein, which is going to allow us to develop more gluten, mm -hmm. which is going to give us more structure and more chew. Right. I have two and a quarter cups of bread flour here. Okay. And to that, I'm going to add a quarter cup of granulated sugar, two and a quarter teaspoons of instant or rapid rise yeast, and a half teaspoon of table salt. Okay. That's the dry part of the mix. Okay. Now, malasadas get their richness from a combination of dairy and eggs. Okay. So I have two whole eggs, large, as well as two tablespoons of unsalted butter that I've melted and then cooled. Let it cool. And you see all kinds of dairy from half and half to evaporated milk. Right. It's very common. Right. But we actually liked the flavor and texture of whole milk. So we're using three quarters of a cup of whole milk. So I'll just whisk this together, make sure those eggs are broken up, and now we'll add it to our dry mixture. So I have my dough hook on, and I'm going to start this on low speed, and we'll let this go just until everything has combined. It'll take about two minutes until it looks like an actual dough. Okay. Okay, so now it's starting to look like a dough. A beautifully sticky dough. And we want it to get even stickier. So we're gonna let this go on medium speed now okay. for about eight minutes until we have a really nice uniform dough that looks shiny and sticky. Okay, shiny okay? and sticky, got yes. it. Yes, eight minutes. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Bridget, obviously we can see that the dough has come together. Ooh, stretchy. Right? It looks nice and smooth. Good gluten. Right. It's got stretch, but it's also high hydration dough, which is going to make the dough light and chewy. But you know what the downside of a high hydration dough is? It's a little sticky. It's very sticky. Yes. So I have a bowl scraper here that I've sprayed with vegetable oil okay. spray, and I'm going to put this all into a greased large bowl. Lovely dough, though. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just going to cover this, oh. and we're going to let this rise at room temperature until it's doubled in size which will take about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on the temperature of your room. Okay. Bridget, this dough has definitely doubled in size. It's gorgeous. It's just grown. That's a good sign. One step closer in our malasada journey. Now, instead of getting our whole counter all sticky, right. we're gonna confine our space and use a rimmed baking sheet. Okay. So I have a tablespoon of vegetable oil, and I'm gonna pour that in here and just spread that around. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna use my fingers because I need to get my fingers greasy before we do this. So I'll take my dough. Oh, I don't even have to use. <laughs> Look at that. It's like, please let me out. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just going to take this dough oh my gosh. and spread it out in the pan. We're going to deflate any you know big bubbles, just press it out a bit. Now these are only supposed to be about three eighths, so slightly less than half an inch thick. Okay. So you can spread them out a good bit. Now, I have my bench scraper here, and I'm even gonna give that a little rub with some of the grease that's on my hands, so it will release. And I'm going to divide this up. I want 12 pieces. Okay. So that's why I was trying to get it into a fairly even rectangle, just so I know that my pieces are even. I like using a bench scraper because it's sharp enough to cut through dough, but especially when you have slippery hands and slippery surfaces, it's much safer to use than a knife. Very good. I'm gonna go four this way. All right, now we're just gonna take these, make sure they're separate, and then we're just gonna take your fingers and kind of work these out more or less into a disc shape. Okay. I mean, they're really almost there. We're yeah. just gonna kind of make them a little bit rounder and flatten them out if we've got any big bubbles. Oh, and these basically will bend to any shape you want them to be <laughs> in. They're little blobs 
of potential. That's right. <laughs> look at these. I think they look pretty good. I think, I think it looks spectacular. All right, so I'm gonna take my plastic wrap from before and we'll just cover this and we're gonna let this proof until they're nice and puffy and that'll take about half an hour. Oh, not long at all. No. Want more new recipes and stories from Cook's Country? Then sign up for our Cook's Country email newsletter. It's free. Our newsletter takes you behind the scenes with the people and the recipes changing the way America cooks. Plus, you'll also get a sneak peek of upcoming recipes from the magazine, beloved recipes from previous seasons, and so much more. Just scan the QR code or visit cookscountry.com to sign up and start getting your free email newsletter today. Bridget, look how nice and puffy our little discs are. Just a little bit puffy. Mm-hmm, after 30 minutes. So now they're ready to fry. Okay. I have two quarts of vegetable oil in my large Dutch oven. It's over medium-high heat, and I wanted to get the oil all the way up to 350 degrees. Okay, gotcha. We want to keep it between 325 and 350 the whole time we're frying. So it's going to get a really nice, crisp exterior. Mm-hmm. Nice. And we're only going to do four at a time. We're going to do three batches so we don't overcrowd the oil and drop the temperature too drastically. Now I am gonna use some of this oil that's still here on the pan to very carefully pick these up and drop them in. I do love that you're kind of putting them away from you. So if there is any splattering of oil, it's gonna happen over there. <laughs> but you're doing this beautifully. Thank you. Mm. And these are only gonna take about three minutes and I'll flip them halfway through. Okay, great. I can see they're getting some nice color. Beautiful. Give them a flip. You're just a little excited, I know. It's a good sound. Okay, it's been about another minute and a half. Let's see what the other side, oh. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Perfection. Ah. Oh, that is nice. All right, so I'm gonna very carefully remove these. I have a wire rack set inside another rimmed baking sheet. And I'll just transfer these. All right, this so oil has to come back up to 350 before right. we can do the next batch. So we're gonna toss these in some sugar while they're still nice and warm. Love it. So I have a cup of granulated sugar here. Just gonna give them a little toss. Mm. Yes. We'll kick it old school here. Mm. Okay, second batch. Yes. All right, I'm gonna get a little greasy again. <laughs> All right, my heat is back up to 350. It's actually dipped a little bit now, 340. It's all right. That's okay, it's in the window. Yes. And we're just gonna cook this another three minutes total, flipping halfway. And we'll sugar each batch as they come out. Love it. Are you ready? Yes. Can you smell? Yes. Oh, it's that like just fried. <sighs> three batches, done. These are gorgeous. Oh, still warm. Gorgeous. There's nothing like the smell of a freshly made malasada. They float away, mm -hmm. but not fast enough. <laughs> I'm gonna catch one. Okay. Mm. Heavenly. Mm -hmm. Ethereal. Puffed. Angelic. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. <laughs> mm. You are the queen of synonyms. <laughs> <laughs> Crispy exterior mm -hmm. is gorgeous. But it's it's a little chewy, but it's also soft. Yeah. It's like a delicate chew. Oh, these are gorgeous. Look at that beautiful crumb inside. Cooked all the way through. Well, I think it's helpful that they were kind of thin. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we stretched them out and they weren't that thick to start with. Mm. But they're so puffy and, mm. oh my goodness. And not too sweet. Mm -mm. You do get a little sweetness from the sugar, obviously, but the dough itself, it just really contrasts that. These are gorgeous. You definitely have to make these beautiful donuts at home and it starts with bread flour and milk to make a sticky dough. Pat the dough into rounds and then fry and toss in sugar. It doesn't get much better than this. So from Cook's Country, Malasadas. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season along with product reviews and select episodes. And those are all on our website, cookscountry.com slash TV. All right, I'll share. <laughs> You're too good to me. We hope you enjoyed this video and tune in for more. Hit those like and subscribe buttons so you never miss a single one. 
And if you're ready to take your cooking to the next level, try our digital all access membership where you can stream every season of Cook's Country anytime, anywhere, and always ad free. Plus, you'll gain unlimited access to all of America's Test Kitchen fail proof recipes, unbiased reviews, fresh episodes, exclusive offers, and more. Just scan the QR code or head over to cookscountry.com to sign up for a free trial. And while you're there, sign up for our free newsletter and download our app. And let's make something great together.